thankful for God's faithfulness. I am so thankful for his faithfulness, you know. I mean, we as humans, we, we can be human, you know. We can falter, be faithless, mess up. But God is always faithful. He's always present. He's steady. He's constant. He yes. is loyal. I love that. And his love is just everlasting for us. You know, it's sometimes it can be you think about salvation and we're here and we we're always talking about it and it can kind of sort of sound stale or feel stale because we get used to it. It's almost like we start taking it for granted, but if we really stop and think about what the salvation means yeah. for us, think about that for a second, what that means for you personally and what that means for your, your life while you're here on earth. The power and the grace and the love, the freedom. And then think about what that means for your life for eternity. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> it's good. Thank you, Lord. So we're gonna we're gonna thank him today for his salvation. Alright, praise the Lord. Let's begin to lift your voices with us as we lift him up in this place. God, you are worthy.
Kelly, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You know, I don't know if you've been watching the Olympics at all, but you know, I feel like this morning we've been in the hurdle race and we've been trying to jump over some hurdles. And you know what? It's time to clear those hurdles. Just, you know, they, we've got technical difficulties. They come, they go. But just close your eyes. If you don't know the word to the song, just close your eyes and worship him anyways because it's going to come to you. Just let the Spirit of God move. You know, we're doing this uh, message series on the Spirit of God, and I'm telling you, he wants to fill this room today. You know, we see empty chairs, but he wants to fill this room today. He wants to pour into us something greater. So don't worry about whether you know the words or not. Just press into his presence this morning because it is here. It is here in Jesus' name.
Yes, God. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. stars they wept, the morning sun was dead, the Savior of the world was born. His body on the cross, His blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon
give you all glory. We give you all praise. I want you to just raise your voice to the Lord and just give him glory. He is good. You know, even if you just don't, if you're not feeling it, that's okay. I am believing for a touch right now. Our God is tangible. He is everywhere all the time. He is here. He is there. He is everywhere. And he is ready to touch us in a way that we can only receive if we are willing to receive it. And right now, Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. I know that I am feeling your presence. And I know that you have your presence to be felt by those that are in the sound of my voice. If you're at home watching right now, I pray right now that you would just open up and receive and allow the presence of God to just touch you in a physical, tangible way right now. Because his presence is sweet. This is what, you know, when we look at Revelation and they're bowing before the throne and they're, they're just praising the Lord forever and forever and forever and forever. And I know we have a song where we sing that forever. We'll be worshiping forever and ever and ever. And I mean, that is that anticipate, anticipate the time that forever starts today, that we are worshiping him forever and ever and ever. And as we feel that, we will start to feel the same thing that the four and 20 elders feel around the throne. We will feel his presence like never before. See, he wants to touch us. He wants us to walk all the time in his presence, to know and know him by his voice to hear him, to know what he has for us on a daily basis. If we're feeling the struggles, he's still there. We don't, the struggles don't go away. We just have his presence to go with us through those struggles. And our God is right there holding us up. He's taking us through because that's who he is. He is our great and powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, awesome, amazing, mighty God. God, you are great. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah, because he is good. He is good all the time, no matter what. So we're glad you're here. You can be seated if you're here in person. If you've been praising the Lord standing up at home, you can be seated as well. We are just glad to have you with us this morning. So we have, uh, you know, if, you've, if you're here and you've got your communication card and you have a prayer request, you can write on the back of that, that card and give us your prayer requests and praise reports, and we'll agree with you in prayer. And um, we will just, we will join with you. We get together on Tuesday mornings to pray. So just put that in there. And that being said too, this Wednesday night is the first Wednesday of the month. So instead of our midweek word, we do our Wednesday night prayer online. You can pray with us at home. We'll have uh, Pastor TJ will be on there to give a short word and, and, and begin the prayer time. And you just take that time to just agree with our prayer points and just, you know, praying for your church our nation, our community, so that we can be in agreement at a certain hour and a certain time together. Amen? Amen, amen. All right. At this time, I'm going to have Brother Landy come and receive our tithes and offerings. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise and worship is so good, isn't it? See, that's why it's important to get here before the service starts. Hallelujah. So you can be reminded he said to, that he wants you to say what he said about you. Not what the circumstances say, not what the report says. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, are you ready to give? So let's talk about the different ways you can give. You can go to our church website for those who are online or here in the sanctuary and click on the Give Now tab. You can also text your tithes and offerings to 703 nine nine seven four six four zero or you can mail them in to the connection church p.o box seven six five eight woodbridge virginia two two one nine five this morning's passage comes from ephesians chapter six verse eight out of the new king james and it reads knowing that whatsoever good anyone does he will receive the same from the lord whether he is a slave or free so today as you give cheerfully and purposefully, let's recognize God has confirmed that he will repay. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we want to see him as our source. So with your tithes and offerings in your hand, let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for reminding us that you are alive, that you'll never fail. You will never leave us nor forsake us. And that you promise that whatsoever good we do, the same shall we receive of you. So we thank you for this opportunity to bring the tithe, to bring the offering, to sow it into the works that you're doing here at the Connection Church. We thank you for it and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So as you leave the sanctuary today, you can drop your tithes and offerings as you exit. 
And for those joining us online and here in the sanctuary, thank you once again for your continual support here at The Connection. Thank you. church you know what I do not want this in my pocket that will distract me hang on this thing buzzes and notifies you and sometimes it's worse than the devil messing your mind up coming against you phone buzzing notifications it is so great to see you all here this morning those of you who are listening online Thank you for tuning in, and those of you that are here, you can get on and listen again at 7 p.m. tonight. We will put this back on, and uh, we've been working on trying to get to where we can stream, and uh, we're having trouble with internet signal, so I'm not sure when that's going to happen, uh, but we'll keep working on it. Amen. So, why do a series on the Holy Spirit? And that's because I believe that the Holy Spirit is one of the most misunderstood people in the, in, in the church, person in the church, most misunderstood person in the church. The Holy Spirit has had these different labels and stereotypes put upon him. And we need to undo those stereotypes. And we need to understand the Holy Spirit, his function and his, his place of what he's done in scripture, what he does in our life, his place in our life. And the thing is, is we need the Holy Spirit in our church. Amen? We need the Holy Spirit in our church. And without him, one of two things will happen. The church will morph into a social club or it will become a religious institution. It's one of those two that will take place. And this is why we need him in our church, because I'm not interested in a social club. I love to socialize with you. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not interested in a social club, and I really do not want a religious institution. I want the freedom and the liberty of Christ and his spirit moving in our church. So this is why we're doing a series on the Holy Spirit, and really this is to introduce everyone to the person of the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like an introduction. And maybe it's a lot of stuff you already know. Awesome. But I can guarantee you, just about guarantee you, you're going to learn something. I was, and it's not just because I've been learning stuff, because I've been learning stuff. But I, I, just, I just look around. I know what's been taught. I know what's been believed over the years i know the the language and the different things like the like we said last week the holy spirit is not an it you know uh, those kind of things and I, we've heard the holy spirit being called an it and and the holy spirit is a person amen it's not he's not some mystical power it's not like that when we read in john 14:26 jesus said but the helper this is the amplified version, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strength, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit with whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. This is Jesus speaking again. He will teach you all things. How many would like to know everything? Wouldn't that be cool? And uh, I, I sit down and I played a trivia game with my wife. That was my first mistake. But my father-in-law was there at the table too. That was my second mistake. Uh, my daughter was there and that's my third mistake. 
you know, these are all three brainiacs and I'm the dumb one. How many can identify? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it, it kind of felt like that. I didn't know most of the answers. But man, when it was multiple choice, I was like, all right, Lord, <laughs> one in three, <laughs> I can get this, you know. So I, I guessed and got a couple. But uh, I, there were some of those things, and, and they laughed at me a little bit because I didn't know some of the stuff. They're like, really, you didn't know that? I was like, no, I don't know. I was never all school smart and all this and that. But see, the thing is, is when he says he'll lead you, and let's, if Aaron, if you can put that scripture back on the screen on Acts, or uh, John 14, 26, if we have that. He will teach you, and, and, oh, let me see if I can find it on here. He will, not maybe, not a might, he will teach you all things. And it's not, oh, which artist painted this painting in the 1800s like I had a question on the, <laughs> in trivia or whatever we, century it was. It's not knowledge like that. No, 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 no. It's the things that you are facing. The things that you are going through. How would you like to know all things that you're going through? The answer. And even with the things that you don't have a specific answer to, the Holy Spirit is what? A comforter. He's standing by. See, therefore, you have peace because that's one of his characteristics. Right? He is the spirit of peace. And so now, when I'm faced with something, if the Holy Spirit's there, he is showing me. He is showing me how to get through that thing. He's showing me the answer to it, whether it's with a relationship with my wife, my husband, my children, my friends, my coworkers, or whether it's a, a job decision I need to make, a financial decision. Do I buy this house? Do I buy that one, this car, that one? How many's ever bought a lemon of a car, right? Or a house that just, man, it's it just one problem after another. How would you like to know all things? You say, well, TJ, that sounds like... I don't know, some weird psychic stuff. No, 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 no. God cares about you. He cares so much about you that he sent his son to die, and then Jesus said, he's coming in my place to act on my behalf. The things I did here on the earth, now the Holy Spirit's with you, so you can do those things. It says in the scripture, Jesus knew with their thoughts before they even spoke it. How would you like to know people's thoughts before they even start talking to you? And you already know what they're thinking. He said, TJ, this is out there. It's scripture. In the gospels, when we read, this is what Jesus did. And he said, huh, I'm sending the comforter, so now you can do it. Well, it excites me. Amen. I like that. I'm going to take it. This is a very important verse. If you're taking notes, write it down. If you're not taking notes, write it down. If you have a phone, you don't have a notepad and a pen, pull up the little notes thing or whatever that you do to take notes and write down John 14, 26. Put a reminder on your phone every day so you'll read that every day because this scripture is one of the most important scriptures of, of this series and where we're at. Amen? Two principles that are vital to this study. And I have roughly about, it's probably, even though it's nine pages, I have some things, it, it's less than that, but... I, there's no way we're going to get through it again. And, you know, that's okay. And the reason is, is because there's always next Sunday, right? So we're good. We're going to cover all of it and we're going to take our time because we really need to get a hold of this and understand this. Two principles that are vital to this study. Though. Number one, the Holy Spirit is a divine person. So am I seeing him as a mystical power or a divine person? John Bevere said this, someone who sees God's spirit as an influence or supreme power will constantly say, I want more of the spirit. On the contrary, someone who sees him as a wonderful person will say, how can I give my, more of myself to him? And we'll be gleaning from John Bevere and his son Addison. They wrote this book called The Holy Spirit, an introduction. And I, I'm going to tell you, it's just, it's solid. It's wonderful. And so if you get a chance to get that book, you can, you can get that. Know that we're going over this material. But the second thing, the principle that's vital, is that we got to recognize the Holy Spirit as supreme in authority. 
supreme in authority. So let's submit to him now in prayer. Father, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus and we thank you for sending your spirit. And we say, Holy Spirit, have control of this service here today. Lord, we submit to you. We submit to the leading of your spirit and we come against all distractions and command it to go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible makes it very clear that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. The, and when I say Godhead or Trinity, we're talking about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You know, when you got baptized, if you did, you know, we dunk people underwater all the way full submersion, and we say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Okay, so that's just how we do it. And that's how the Scripture said to do it, so that's how we do it. Uh, in Genesis, and, and see, the Bible it makes this clear from the beginning. I want you to see this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Notice that God did not say, Let me make man. So get this. The drama of creation required three distinct actors playing three distinct parts. God was, refer God was referring to himself as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we see in Acts 10.38, it says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all. How many did he heal? All who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. In this verse, we witness the Father anointing Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons working together for one common purpose. Are you seeing this? Amen. One more example, Matthew 3, 16. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, we went over last week, the Holy Spirit is not a dove. Okay, the Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. Okay, but so what do we see here, though, in these two verses? And did we read 17? And a voice, yes, a voice came from heaven. This is important because we notice that all the members of the Godhead are manifest here in these verses. First, Jesus was baptized by John. Then the Spirit of God descended upon him. And finally, God declared from heaven, this right here, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Mm. And let me say, if you are his child, God is pleased with you. Uh, amen. Amen. Don't let the enemy beat you up and tell you, oh, you're not worthy to be a son or a daughter of God. Amen. So, in Matthew 3, 16 and 17, we see that all three persons of the Godhead. Now, look, it, it's impossible to fully understand the Trinity or the Godhead. Uh, we, in our human, finite minds... You know, we just, we can't comprehend that. It's hard for us because we say three are one. Here's an example, though, and this example has been used for years, but, you know, you take water. Water is your example. You have the liquid form of water, you have ice, and you have what? Steam, right? You got three different forms of water. All three forms have the same chemical makeup. It's all H2O, no matter which one it is. It's all the same. Three in one, temperature decides what form that the water's in. Now, that helps a little bit. So, when I see, you know, there's ice and then there's the liquid and then there's steam, you know, of water. And, and it helps us a little bit, but truly, we really can't understand. But in the same way that we have the water with the three different forms, God's central makeup doesn't change. When you see the Son, you see the Father, and the Spirit was sent to reveal the Son to us. We see that in John 17, 21. If you're taking notes, write that down. Ephesians 1, 17 through 18. You can look those up later. God is one in person, one in purpose, yet he has three expressions, persons, who form unique functions. Though there's only, though there's three persons, there's only one God. And see, that's the part that's hard for us to understand because we don't, we don't serve three gods. We serve one God. They're three in one. And, and that's why we, you know, 
I'm, I can see some of you, like your mind's blowing up right now. My mind blew up this week, again, for the umpteenth time, because I've compl- uh, contemplated the Trinity, and I, we can't totally understand it. But in Deuteronomy 6.4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Romans 3.30 says, There is one God who will justify. James 2.19, You believe that there is one God. You do well, even the demons believe and tremble. There are three distinct divine persons, but only one God. Now, some good stuff. And now is when we get... As Mark Shell would say, we get to smoke some holy cows. And it's, it's rare that we, we do this or that I do this, but this is something that we've just got to get because it's, you know, my mind just kind of went, whoo, this week on some of this. And I'm hoping the same is for you. I want to first, ins- uh, I want to, first, I want to stress the importance of the Holy Spirit in the Godhead. I want you to see this. The Holy Spirit is actually the first member of, of the Godhead to be specifically named in the Bible. Now, when you go to Genesis, the very first two verses, let's read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Holy Spirit shows up in verse 2 as the first member of the Godhead to be mentioned by name. Now, you might be thinking, didn't God the Father create the heavens and the earth in verse 1? Nope. Let's go back to verse 1. In the beginning, God. The reference to God in verse 1, right here, is the plural form in the Hebrew of Elohim. It's plural. And what it means is rulers, divine, divine ones, or judges. In other words, it's plural, it's three. God there was talking about the full Godhead. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, the Holy Spirit is God, and he continued on to say the Holy Spirit was hovering over, what did it say? The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. This is when the earth was without form and it was void. Now, see, when I think in my mind from, you know, little, I would always think, you know, because in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and I would just think God, I would just think, you know, God the Father usually is what comes to mind. But see, that's not what it means. He's talking about the full Godhead in verse 1. In verse 2, we see the Holy Spirit show up as the first one revealed. So who is the Holy Spirit? Church, I can tell you that he is the most amazing, wonderful, kind, tender, sensitive, mighty person on the face of the earth. How can I say on the face of the earth? Because we have to realize that God the Father, the Father is in heaven. And Jesus is at his right hand. The Spirit of God is in you and me. Amen. Now, get this, in Mark 16, 19, it says, So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father. Acts 1, 9, 11. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Now, these two men mentioned here, every theologian will tell you, they're angels. And they made it clear to the disciples that Jesus would return in the same way he left. In other words, he's not going to return to earth until he comes in the clouds. How many have seen Jesus come in the clouds? Not not me. My hand shouldn't have even been up, right? No. No one has seen that. The answer is clearly no. So this means that right now Jesus is still at the right hand of God in heaven. Think about the time Stephen was stoned. We look in Acts 7, verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, 
I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Can you imagine what Stephen saw as he was dying? Stephen was shown a vision of heaven before he died and saw Jesus at the right hand of the Father so he could proclaim it to all of those who stoned him. He could proclaim it to all of those who, would, who could hear. He was able to say, Jesus is at the right hand of God. And the reason he was shown this was because he was full. You can go back to verse 55, being full of the Holy Spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit is. It's in you. It's in me. He's in me. I should say it that way. The Holy Spirit. Mm, we need to know that Jesus has been at the right hand of the Father for approximately 2,000 years. Okay? And he's not here on earth. John Bevere says this, I know we like to say he lives in our hearts, but in reality, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, is the one who makes our hearts his dwelling place. Now, this one right here, I mean, I just heard a little one the other day talk about how Jesus is living in her heart. Now, depending on what you mean, that could be correct, or just it's just not correct. In Philippians 1.19, it says, For I know that this will... Uh, you see... It's important for us to under, recognize that the Holy Spirit is referred to as both the Spirit of God, the Father, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Son. Uh, look at this, Philippians 1.19. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Jesus made it abundantly clear that he would have to leave so the Holy Spirit could come in his place. Paul is clearly referring to to the Holy Spirit here, the helper, not the incarnate Jesus, because Jesus is no longer on the earth. Matthew 10, 20, for it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Jesus was speaking of the time to come when his disciples would be persecuted and tried for the gospel's sake. The spirit of the father, the Holy Spirit would guide them and put, them, put the right words in their mouth. See, that's what I want. I want the Holy Spirit to put the right words in my mouth in all situations at all times. And, and it's not always that way for me. Church, I'm preaching to myself. I've got to have that. I, I need that. Church is by His grace, the empowerment, the empowerment of His Holy Spirit that makes me what I am. Part of the confusion that many make in terms of Jesus being in their heart comes from cherry-picking Scripture or just misinterpretation. I want to give you one example and then move on and wrap this up. That Christ... And this is Ephesians 3.17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Now, you could see how if you just saw this one scripture alone, it could bring confusion, that Christ may dwell in your hearts, right? But see, this is a prayer of Paul, and it's not the only words of the prayer, we can't take it by itself. We need to read the verses around it. In verse 16, it says that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with his might through his spirit in the inner man that, it's a continuation of this sentence here, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Are you seeing this? Listen, there's no evangelist, evangelistic appeal in the context of Ephesians 3. Paul's not telling Ephesians to ask Jesus to come into their hearts. He's simply elevating their awareness that Jesus is present within them through the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit always reveals the Son. But the Son is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And it's the Holy Spirit within you says that you are, Paul said in Corinthians, says that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm, hallelujah. The idea of Jesus coming into your heart is nowhere used in any preaching in the Bible. Gospel presentations in the Bible, when you look through Acts, through the, everywhere you see, in the, exhort a proper response to the gospel, which is believe. What is that? John 3, 16, right? Acts 16, 31. You believe, then you receive. John 1, 12, and you repent. In other words, you change the way you think. 
But we don't see there where Peter got up and he preached after the upper room and he came down. He didn't say, ask Jesus in your heart. He didn't say that. He said, change the way you think and believe by faith that Jesus rose from the dead. Believe in your heart. Confess him as Lord, right? These are the things that we see being told. These are the things that we, that we read in Scripture. So how did this happen? Just misinterpretation, the Scripture here, that, tradition, whatever, some religious thing. I mean, it's been going on for a long time. But we need to understand the Godhead as much as we can of what Scripture is saying. Bear with me just a little bit more. The three-in-one concept, again, it's very difficult to grasp because it, defies, it, it, it just defies our human understanding. 1 Corinthians offers some insight into how all the three work. And we're going to end here. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. As we read this passage, we discover that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all serve different roles. Throughout Scripture, because they said, they said, see, it says there's differences of administrations. See, throughout Scripture, we see the Father operates or initiates, the Son administrates, and the Holy Spirit manifests. All of them work together for the same purpose. Let me give you an example. If you were to build a house, you need certain people. Who do you need? You need an architect, you need a foreman, and you need workers subcontractors, right, to actually build the house. In that illustration, God the Father is the arch architect, Jesus is the foreman, and the Holy Spirit is represented by the workers who build the house. He is the manifester, if that's a word, of creation. I looked it up. In another language, it is a word. Hey, <laughs> just not ours. All three roles are essential to the construction of any house. Church, we need all three. We need all three, and we need to understand. We pray to the Father in Jesus' name through the Holy Spirit. And next week, we're going to start, and we're going to talk, see about the Holy Spirit's function and what He does. And it's amazing. And the more that you get into Scripture and you read with the Holy Spirit in, the mind, in mind, the more that you will understand in Scripture. The more you will see. The more revelation that I'm getting now, as I apply that and begin to read through like the book of Acts again, it's just different. It's just different. And I want that for you. For those of you listening online, I want it for you too. I want it for everyone. For you to be able to look at Scripture and the Holy Spirit to illuminate it in such a way that it just, it just changes you and it excites you. Church, we need revelation. Direct, revealed knowledge from God, it comes from the Holy Spirit. We have to be in tune with the Spirit every day. You know, Benny Hinn wrote a book years ago that says, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. And uh, I remember reading that a long time ago. I know some people talked about oh, some issues with it or problems, whatever. Uh, here's what I know. He wakes up in the morning and says, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. He's in tune. And, he's saying, and what, what he's saying is be in tune with the Spirit. And that's the question we, we need to ask ourselves as we're, as we're ending here today. Are, or am I in, in tune with the Spirit of God? Let me, let me talk about something else that's, it, this is not in my notes at all, one iota. I, I just, this is coming to my mind right now. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to just push this to the side. I remember a time in my life where I didn't care about the things of God. I knew about God. Oh, I did. I had even laid hands on the sick. I seen legs. I laid hands on people. I saw a leg grow out that much. I, I promise you. He had a limp and then he walked straight. He cried like a baby and ran around the room. I saw miracles after miracles, the presence of God in my life. I had a man one time, he was an evangelist, we were in a church, and he touched me on my chest. And I was determined there was no way I was going to hit the floor. God humbled me real quick. My knees buckled so fast, I crumbled to the floor. The catcher, so to speak, you know, in these Pentecostal things, you know, they have this catcher. He couldn't catch me. 
I crumbled that much. My legs just went out from, I mean, the inside, the burning in my chest was so strong, I thought my heart was going to bust out of my chest. That's how much the Spirit of God hit me when that man touched my chest. I, that's the most, I've, I've, I've experienced that very few times in my life. But I remember years later, there was a time, I just, for a few months, I was just like, you know, I just don't care. And I began to just do what I want to do. You know, don't pray, don't read the word. Yes, show up at church, kind of put on the face. Go through it, right? And so when I did something wrong, when I would sin... After a while, it didn't feel as bad to me. It didn't feel as bad. In the beginning, it felt bad, but see, I was, oh, oh, I don't care, I don't care. And so the Spirit right in the beginning was saying, no, 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 but I was like, I want to do what I want to do. Jesus wasn't my Lord at that point. I wasn't submitted to His Spirit. I was just doing what I want to do. And so therefore, when I go sin... Oh, and it felt good and everything was great. It just like it just didn't matter. But I was miserable when I put my head down at night. But see, in the moment, it just didn't matter. But see, right now, at this very moment, if I was to walk out here and do a couple of the things I did at that time, the Spirit wouldn't let me. If I even just had a thought to go do that, I mean, the Spirit would convict me so bad. And I would feel it on the inside. In church, if you're at that spot, connected with the Spirit to where He's leading you in that way, there is just nothing like it. Because see, when I lay my head at night, and yeah, I've had some trouble sleeping before, you know, because I stressed about something or worried about somebody else or this or that, but I'm at peace with where I'm at with God. I know where I'm at. And this morning, are you submitted to the Spirit of God fully? You know, and that's the question I ask. Am I submitted to the Spirit fully? To the point where I just, even if I think about going and doing something, quote, I'm not supposed to do, or, or a commandment in the Bible says, oh, don't do this, don't do that. Don't give in to anger, blah, blah, blah. If I just even think about doing that, the conviction. I remember the other day, I got angry, and I shouldn't have. And I went and apologized to my son. And the reason I apologized to my son, because the Spirit wouldn't leave me alone till I did. Do you have that, church? And I'm not trying to brag because let me tell you, I've been at the spot where I didn't care. I've been at the spot where I didn't feel his presence. And I'm never going back. I'll never go back to that place. It's a place of misery. It is a place of torment. It is a place of bondage where my mind isn't free. And now I have a freedom and a liberty because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We read that last week. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let's all stand. This morning, if you're here and something inside of you says, I need to give more of myself over to the Spirit. I need to submit more of me to the Spirit. I'd like you just as an act of faith just to step out from that aisle and come forward. No one's going to touch you or anything. But you're saying, I just, I want to submit more to the Spirit than what I am now. Just come forward at this time. And I'm going to include myself with you. Because I need to give myself over more to the Spirit 
than I was before. Hallelujah. And see, during this series, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, we need the convicting power of your spirit. We need the Holy Spirit like never before, church. There's so many things and problems that you're going through. I hear the Lord saying, there's some of you here, you're going through problems and you've turned and God says, you've asked and said, God, where are you? You've asked the question, where are you? God says, I've never been anywhere but with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Submit to my spirit, and I'll give you the freedom and the liberty that you desire. You'll have the peace that you need. This is what I feel the Spirit saying right now, church. We haven't gotten there yet in the message, but see, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit... When you submit yourself over to him, he gives you a prayer language and you can pray in the spirit and you can feel him and there's more clarity, there's more freedom and liberty. And that's how you submit to him, church. You begin to just pray in the spirit, do it every day. Begin to pray in the spirit. If you're bound in sin, if if you can't seem to shake it, you can't seem to change, you're tormented with the thoughts every day. Begin to submit yourself to the spirit of God and begin to hear the spirit and get the freedom and the liberty that you desire. If you begin to get faced with a circumstance and you just can't help it and you get stressed and you, and you just get real uptight real fast when anything goes wrong, you need the Spirit of God. You need to submit to Him. Just begin to pray in the Spirit and submit to Him and He will lead and guide you into all things. The Scripture says all things. It's all of the things that you're going through. That's what He's referencing. He's saying, I will be there to help you and lead you into all truth. Lord, right now, I thank you and I praise you. Lord, these here at this altar now, I thank you for just enduing them with power. Lord, empower them by your spirit like never before. Bring them closer to you, to the place where your Holy Spirit is guiding them every minute of every hour of every day. Lord, bring me to that place. Bring these to that place. Lord, where we feel you. Every single thing that we're faced, every temptation, Lord, we know, we're, no, we hear no, we hear no. Every decision, we hear yes or a no. And it's clear, and it's clear, because we're submitted to your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Something else that the Lord is beginning to tell me right now is that when you're in his spirit, sometimes... We, with our busyness, and in this area, I want to tell you, in this D.C. area, in this Northern Virginia area, the stronghold is stress. The principality over this area is stress. It is busyness. It wants to bring you down and keep you occupied with all the things and the cares of this world. And it wants to keep you going so fast. That's why when you go to the checkout and you see a long line, your face drops. You get a long face and you get impatient. Church, I've been there. I know. And you see, because you want to hurry up, you want to get through. See, when you go down south, it's different. You go through a line in the checkout and everybody's just kind of laid back and talking, taking their time. Around here, it's not like that. That's because there's a stronghold in this area of stress. And God wants to break that off of you. Any, all that stress feeling and that 95 traffic junk and all of that stuff. He wants to break that stress off of you. Hallelujah. He wants to give you peace. And when you, to do that, you've got to meditate in his word. You've got to get before God and you've got to pray in the spirit and just soak in his presence. The spirit is saying he wants you to soak in him. There's a soaking that can take place. When, the, when, when you get into that praise and worship, you can put that music on. You can sit there and just soak during the week and allow his presence to come in and change you. Church, I know what I'm talking about. I felt it for 100% in my, my, myself inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
As you begin to pray, some of you, you've done it before and it's been a long time. He wants you to get into that time of worship and the enemy's going to fight you. The enemy's going to fight you on Monday and Tuesday when you decide to put that worship music back on and say praise be to God and to begin to pray in the spirit and shatarariya by Sunday and you begin to do those things. The enemy's going to fight you. Understand it's coming, but you've got the power to put him under your feet because he's the head and we're his body and all things are under his feet. He has no place in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Elder Joe, he's got this right there. There you go. Mitai, yes, Ishatai, Ikatai, Robo Hokoto, Mele Beheshe Tedara Bahaya. You have heard my voice today. Yes. I am speaking to you, not the man, not the woman in the street. Not the one that is not here. I am speaking to you this day, and you have heard my word. I am calling you to my side once again. I am calling you to intimacy with me. I am calling you to obey what you have heard me say this day in this message. I am calling you to hear and obey. For there are those of you that are here today... That if you do not draw nigh unto me for that which is coming, that which is coming, you think you have dealt with, you think you have dealt with strong powers and forces to this point. But is that which is coming, and that which is coming is after you. It is after your soul. It is after to draw you away from me. But I am jealous over you, and I would not have the enemy to have you. But I must have your will. I, I must have your obedience. I must have you to hear my voice, and to heed, and come unto me, and declare, and to make your mind to decide this day. No yeah. No matter what forces may come against you, no matter what may come your way, you will serve me, you will obey me, you will love me, and you will receive me unto you. For I love you, and I have given my all unto you, and I would not have you to suffer. I would not have you to be tormented. I would not have you to be tried. I would have you to live victorious, free, on high, above and not beneath I would have you to be in joy and peace and have my mind in you and for it to be settled in you that you may rejoice in me in the time that shall come and that you would rejoice in me forever and forever and forever and we will be together forever and ever Yes. Says the Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Church, God has spoken very clear that we are to submit to his spirit as a divine person, as supreme in authority. And as you do that, the victory is going to come. The victory is going to come in the different areas in your life. Father, today we thank you for your spirit that has moved here in our service. We thank you for sending your son. Lord, in Jesus, we thank you for sending your spirit to be in your place here on this earth. Lord, that we may do wondrous works in your name. And so, Lord, as you do the work in us, may we be able to share it and do the work for others, Lord. In Jesus' name and in them. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Church, God is good. God is good. And uh, this week, get in that time, that special time. And on Wednesday night, let me tell you, corporately, if we're all praying at the same time, something all different's going to take place. Something's going to happen. 
I need those prayer points, whatever you got. He <laughs> said, send me whatever you got. I, I tell you, see, we, we need to, uh, we need, we're going to target our prayers a little bit more on Wednesday night. So, it, you know, I've got a couple things that we need to pray about, and we may have some more. And, you know, Wednesday night, it's so important that we're there and we pray. Church, it's prayer that brings about the move of God. And it's the anointing that brings men, men, men to repentance. It breaks the yoke of bondage. Amen. Amen. Do you have one more thing? Dad. Hey, one more. Turn me back. Yeah, there. Well, we need to be praying for our nation. Yes. Wednesday night, we're going to pray for our mm -hmm. nation. We really need to pray. There is so much deception and so much lies, mm -hmm. so much manipulation. If you think you know what the truth is, please come and let me know, because I haven't found anybody yet that really knows. Mm. Yeah. You, you, you just don't have it. There's so many things in the political arena, medical, you just go down the list. Medical, yeah. In church, the things that are being done and it's happening and the agenda of the Antichrist, the agenda of the one world government, the agenda that you can read about in the Bible, those things are coming to pass before our eyes. And we need to be praying for this nation because it affects you specifically and it affects this church. I am so glad to see you. I couldn't see you up here this morning. Man, uh, it was so hard. I kept wanting to look back. Is there anybody here? Yes, amen. amen. But I'm so glad to see you. Amen. Because there's strength. Yes. There's strength in your spirit. Yes. And there's strength in your agreement. Mm -hmm. And because you're here and you're in agreement... The power of God can manifest and he can do what he's doing here today to strengthen us and to wake us up and get us to grab hold and be prepared. God was saying a lot to us here today, but he, wants, he said that which is coming, he said, there's more to it. It's not going to touch you. You're hid in him. Yeah. You're going to have a joy through it. And you're going to be a light shining that others may see and come and say, how can you? There's one answer in Jesus only. Right. And, and you need to be here to be able to hear those kind of things, to understand those kind of things, so that we can be what God's called us to be. Pray for our nation, because it affects this church and the laws and stuff. I don't want to go to jail. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, I will obey God rather than obey man. When it comes down to it, they can pass their laws, but sorry, I will obey God. And if we have to go to jail like Paul did, we'll go to jail. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Can I close in so prayer church, if you're done? Yes, yes. We're going to pray. And, and if you have need of just agreement of prayer or whatever, be sure and come down front as well. Yeah, if you need prayer, you need for, prayer anything, for anything, we'll pray and agree. God touches. Something else, yes. he still heals. That's right. That's right. Amen. I want you to pray for your pastors. Yes, we have Lord. many pastors here. Some of them are listed as such. Some are not. <laughs> some of you function as a pastor. The scripture says, smite the pastor, and the sheep will, what does it say, scatter. Pray for your pastors. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. We come to you today. We thank you for the power of your word today that has been released, and we will not go away changed. We are already changed. In Jesus' name. Father, this week we will be on our face before you, Lord, as you've called us to be before you. 
And, Lord, we will have that special time, and we will go deeper into you and this move of God that you have prophesied and that we have preached and prophesied about for years and years. We shall be in the middle of it, and we shall see it come to pass. You promised us that we would, and we will. We will see it come to pass, Lord, and we are ready and prepared. And this week we'll get more ready and more prepared, and we'll be filled more next week and the more the next week. And, Father, we will shine as lights on the hill like we have never shown before, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your protection and keeping power over every person here. I thank you, God, that you sit within each one here in excitement to, to be in the house of God and to pick the phone up and tell them, say, hey, you missed it. You missed it today. You should have been in church. So, Father, we thank you, God, Lord, that you'll not, not, not none fall by the wayside. Lord, all shall come to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we give you the praise and glory. And we pray for our shepherds and our pastors here today, God, your prayer, keeping power. We take authority over all sickness in this house in Jesus' name. We declare miracles in Jesus' name. Lord, we walk in divine health. We are healed by the power of your word and the Holy Ghost that lives within us. The Spirit of the living God have your way within us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for opening our eyes that we may see and understand how to flow and move in your spirit. Holy Spirit, lead and guide us in all truth. Spirit of the living God, have your way within us. In Jesus' name, amen.